um, we obviously have a presentation, uh, a summarized presentation on PowerPoint, but the committee um, will already have received a detailed um, presentation of the issues uh, from Azimio. I am uh, Derito Moreithi, I'm Chair of the Economic Council of the Azimio Coalition, Azimio uh, La Umoja One Kenya Coalition. So we thank you very much indeed for, for the time and we shall make haste. Um, the issues uh, to be addressed as are uh, the uh, dialogue committee has agreed and directed, so I won't really delve into them. Uh, cost of living then, and uh, first item to say about cost of living is that uh, Article 43 of the Constitution places a duty on the state to deliver on the rights and uh, the social and economic rights under Article 43 uh, to the highest attainable standards. You will find uh, on close examination that the issues of cost of living are in fact contained um, within uh, Article 43. So three broad points will address very quickly on the uh, cost of living. And those three points are what drives cost of living. Um, and those things are the management of exchange rate, uh, the management of uh, public finances, as well as the mix uh, that, uh, is, uh, that is used to manage uh, those uh, instruments. On the question of, on the question of uh, exchange rate, I think what you will uh, see on the slide before you is what has happened in the last 12 months. That the Kenya shilling has collapsed from 120 shillings to a dollar to 150 shillings to uh, one US dollar. The effect of it, of that 25% depreciation of the shilling, uh, that is transmitted directly into the cost of living. So that everything that you are buying this year, this August or this October, is 25% more expensive than it was last year, simply because of the effect of the um, exchange rate. Of course, the committee will want to address itself what drives exchange rate. You have had some of it already here from FKE. Portfolio flows, meaning the monies that foreigners come to invest in our stock exchange. And what has happened is that the um, uh, uh, foreigners have left. That's why the stock exchange is at its lowest point. And I'll show you a slide to that effect in just a moment. Now, I've told, uh, we've said to the committee, management of public finances as a key driver of the cost of living questions. Why? Because uh, taxation and borrowing have a direct bearing on what happens to the citizen, and we'll show you a couple of slides uh, on that. Where we are, if you on the outlook, is that we expect, when I say we expect, these are the policies and instruments that um, have been placed already in Parliament, for example, the uh, budget policy statement and the midterm expenditure framework. What does it call for? It calls for increased taxation. So next year, taxes are expected to go up 400 billion. It calls for continued borrowing, and I'll show you a slide in a moment, that um, the budget deficit is in the order of 760 billion, and that is expected. That is what is planned. Both things imply that we, uh, it is not possible to bring the cost of living under control. Third point to make, um, experts agree we are in dire possibility, uh, we are in debt distress and the risk of debt default is looming and uh, all those things show that in fact um, uh, we are on a terrible trajectory. Is it only against the dollar that... Um, the shilling is losing ground. Uh, that's a chart that shows you what has happened to the shilling in relation to the Tanzanian shilling. 
uh, if you just go back to the slide, what you'll notice, uh, we're moving uh, from, uh, uh, again, a similar kind of depreciation of the shil Kenya shilling against Tanzania. So that the argument that this is a global problem is not exactly global for every, uh, for <laughs> what individual countries are doing um, has a lot to uh, explain the cost of living for their citizens. Um, now, management of public finances is, uh, honorable members, fairly straightforward. You make spending plans. Those spending plans need to be financed. So either you are taxing to get money to finance your budget or you're borrowing. Usually you're doing both. What is the issue? Why is it difficult to bring the cost of living under control? Because the tools that are being used today are blunting economic activity. They are eroding confidence. Again, going back to why is the stock exchange performing so poorly? Uh, it is leading to the flight of capital from the securities exchange. And the mix of taxation and interest uh, is not working. The big headline point there is the budget deficit of uh, 768 billion this year anticipated to be 760 billion next year where do you get that data um, from the budget policy statement and the midterm expenditure framework that, those are the same numbers uh, in a slide what you will see there is continued increment of government spending and uh, if the committee committee permits you know, economists think about cost of living or inflation as too much money chasing too few goods. So if you want to bring, you know, inflation down, then you have to slow down on expenditure. You don't accelerate expenditure. Now, what the combination of policies is doing is to increase expenditure. Yeah? And you are increasing that expenditure by borrowing. So you are suffering a double whammy. Of course, you will ask us, how then can you reduce government expenditure? What can you do? Well, first of all, eliminate corruption and theft of public resources, eliminate waste, inefficiencies, and imprudent use of public resources. To give you an example, last financial year, uh, last quarter of financial year, so June, May, April, or May, April, June of um, this past financial year, 193 billion, 193.4 billion went to domestic and international travel. Compare that, for example, to what is expected from the housing tax, which is 70 billion. Meaning, if we did not travel, we may not have needed to, to collect the housing tax. You could have financed it by just stopping uh, excessive travel. Um, when you look at uh, social protection, which is being reduced, uh, when you look at the resources to counties that are not growing, all of those things could have been resolved if we uh, avoided excessive expenditure. Um, the other uh, thing that uh, happens when you're borrowing, um, the other thing that happens when you're borrowing is that of course you have to pay. So debt service, what is the issue here? Um, the issue is that debt service is now 67% of actual tax collection, okay? Um, and that slide uh, shows you where, where is the source of this data? Again, uh, budget review and uh, uh, budget outlook, uh, budget review and economic outlook, as well as the financial statement for this financial year. The point being, can you really grow a taxation by 530 billion, which is what is anticipated this year? And can you grow it? at a time when the economic conditions are so poor. What is the effect of excessive borrowing? You squeeze out the private sector, and that is what that slide, uh, again, from the quarterly economic review uh, by Treasury, that is what it is showing you, that the spread, the difference between what depositors are being paid by banks and what government is paying those same banks to borrow that money, that's the spread, and what you see there, it is growing. The effect of it is to squeeze out the private sector. 
And I think FKE were before us and they explained this point uh, very uh, strongly. This is what FKE was saying, that this, uh, the securities exchange is now considered the worst performing. Not considered, that is what the data is showing, uh, the drop being what is on the slide before you. Economic growth, because when you squeeze private sector to the corner, then there is no economic growth. And this is exactly what is happening. If you look, if you compare growth quarter to quarter, what you will find is that economic growth has flatlined. Yeah. So with the exception of the COVID recovery in 2021, when you look at quarter two, basically it has flatlined. We dig deeper in two slides. What really, this inflation or this cost of living, what's inside it, what is driving it? That's the way it is. Food and fuel. So the policies we pursue must address food and fuel costs. But this is the outcome of what has happened in the last 12 months. And you can see, that again, this is a data and graphic from the Kenya Bureau of Statistics. Everything, with the exception of one item there, has gone up with percentages of between 7 and 60-something percent. Same there with non-food items like fuel. Uh, what you will notice, in fact, this is one month old now. This is before the dramatic increase in fuel price uh, this September. So those numbers can only get worse. I know we are fond of blaming international crude prices. That is not uh, fair to anybody because it's not true. That is, in this data again, published by the Kenya National Bill of Statistics, that is the way crude prices are behaving. They are on average 34% lower than they were last year. So it cannot be that they are the reason fuel prices are going up. What is to be done? We must stimulate production by reducing interest rates. We must reduce taxation on energy, on fuel, on food. Taxation to SMEs is the only way you can stimulate production. We must have a balanced budget. Some have argued not possible. It is possible. In 2003, 2004, 2005, you had a balanced budget and you are able to implement um, the items of Article 43, like free primary education, zero-based budgeting, and so on. I have to move faster. Finance Act 2023 um, should re uh, repeal it in its entirety. In any case, the broad policy point is reduced taxation. Next cluster of items, review of um, or audit of the elections. Now, first of all, uh, the audit is not something uh, being suggested. It is the constitutional provision, and you will find it in all those articles of the Constitution from 1, 3, 10, 81, 88, and so on. What kind of audit, forensic and systems audit, is what is required? Why? I mean, Kenyans, as a sovereign, and the Kenyan National Human uh, Commission just said the same point, the sovereigns deserve. In any case, audit is a normal process. Every entity of the state, counties, national government, parastatals, everybody gets audited. We, should aud we must audit uh, this process. And it is by auditing that then we can know what we are fixing. What is the problem that we are fixing with IEBC? So why audit? Um, first of all, there are different numbers from the IBC server, from the portal. And as you can well imagine, I have mixed feelings about bombers. But we have different numbers. <laughs> um, that's the way the numbers look. When you go by regions, when you aggregate the numbers by region, that's the way it looks. So we must audit. Number three, numbers must have statistical validity and consistency. Now, these are the results from the BOMAS portal. Now, elections happen, uh, honorable members, in a polling station. So you could check candidate A, how many polling stations has she won? Those polling stations aggregate to an electoral ward. So how many wards has the candidate won? That aggregates to a constituency, and that aggregates to a county. How can it be possible for these results to obtain where 
a candidate wins at the majority of polling stations but does not win overall. We must audit these results. And remember that the IABC or the electoral body for 30 years, 92 to now, with the exception of one general election, something has gone wrong. So we must dig deeper into what are the structural problems that bring this kind of statistical improbability into our life. If you put it in a map, that's the way it looks. Again, how can it be? We must audit the results to know what really went wrong. <laughs> we want to show you a quick demo about what we mean by auditing um, uh, uh, the results. And uh, co-chairs, we want to emphasize here that, you know, this is our country, all of us. And an institution that uh, continuously is unable to deliver why we have created it, we must ask ourselves, why is it unable to deliver? This institution, um, we're just switching, uh, we'll be back there in a moment. This institution, you will notice that the commissioners and the secretariat quarrel all the time. Even when you change the commissioners, you will notice that commissions also fight amongst themselves. You will also notice that the law seems to create unusual decision making where a minority rule and minority view can prevail over a majority view because the chair happens to be sitting in that minority. That is not how decisions are made in the ordinary course of human events. We must audit. We want to demonstrate with one form uh, Barnabas. <laughs> 